Hey everyone, this is Three Questions with Dr. Chris Kennedy. There we go. You like that music and everything? I like it. Yeah, I told you. So I've actually known Chris forever and, uh, well, actually not, not necessarily forever. I've known you forever in Twitter years, right? So right. Like basically probably 20. I just want to, yeah, like it's, it's been a while. And I actually, I, I know he told me before, don't call him doctor, but I do want to congratulate you because it is a big deal to get your, you know, doctor of education. So, you know, because you just finished that program, you get one of these. <laughs> Ah, I get the sound effect right off the bat. Yeah, That's awesome. Yeah. Hey, so Chris, uh, for everyone listening right now, Chris Kennedy is a uh, someone I consider a good friend. He's actually someone I look up to tremendously, even though I give him a hard time every time we talk. Uh, he's one of the smartest minds in education I've ever met, and I'm being very sincere with this, right? So I, I really appreciate you, and I always love our conversations because uh, you always have have pushed my thinking, made me a better educator. So, with all that being said. Right. Cause that's the last. So now you can say like, every time I bug you, like, remember that one remember time that you, you, said to me. To yeah, you got all the good stuff out of the way though. Too. <laughs> right. Right. So I was just like, anytime I give you a hard time, I'll be like, do you remember? And I'll just show you this one 20 second clip. Right. Perfect. So Chris, I know that you've inspired so many people. Um, currently you're the superintendent in West Vancouver schools. Um, when you look back at your career, who's a teacher that you think of who inspired you and why? Yeah, uh, George, uh, I tell I want to tell you about Mrs. Caffrey. So I had Mrs. Caffrey for three years, grades two, uh, three, and four. And um, so when I was in grade one, um, the teacher told my parents, uh, you know what, Chris is probably, you know, he's not reading, but don't worry about it. Some kids, it's reading's just not for them. And I was really lucky that my parents were teachers and were not going to tolerate kind of that kind of point of view. And and so it was a real struggle learning. I was. I was uh, in, you know, in my own little reading group. I remember I have I have trauma still from kindergarten and grade one and sort of how I was treated around learning. And mm -hmm. then I got with Mrs. Caffrey in grade two and ended up having her for three straight years. And when I left her in the end of grade four, I was a confident learner. And, mm -hmm. and you know, what she did was uh, she made me believe in myself as a learner. Right. And it was just, you know, it, it was that intrinsic pieces. You know, she held me accountable. Uh, she had high expectations for me. She had high standards um, and then was super supportive of me. And so like, I am, I am forever grateful because I think, you know, she changed the trajectory of my school career for sure. That's amazing. And is, is Mrs. Caffrey, is that correct? Mrs. Caffrey. Yeah. Shout out Mrs. Caffrey. Right. Absolutely. You love a little heroin, right? So actually it's funny because I know um, you worked with Dr. Yang Zhao, uh, you know, on your, is a dissertation, correct? Yep. And so when you're going through that process, so I actually remember seeing him speaking. And one of the things that he said was a real big separator uh, in education was confidence. Yeah, I remember him distinct. I don't know if he's ever if you ever talked about that with him, but I thought it was like a really interesting thing, right? Is that kind of belief in yourself. And I think, you know, it's interesting because I know you've done a, a exceptionally well um, in all levels of your career. And also thinking that you actually struggled in school. And I think a lot of times there is some of that too, that, you know, some of those things that maybe were tough for you actually helped you to be more empathetic and understanding of kids that you worked with, which I think is really amazing. It's interesting how many people you come across that are in roles like yours and mine and others mm -hmm. involved in education who actually had a real struggle in, at somewhere. And, and I think, you know, that um, I, I think having to struggle through it, learning at some point actually it's been you know a benefit in the long run yeah it's always you always have a better understanding of, of people who, who do struggle the same and i think and i think it's beneficial to everybody too so i absolutely love that so in your role and i've actually um i've actually got to work with your administrators in west vancouver and i and i know to be honest with you they're exceptional i remember that distinctly uh connecting with many of your leaders and so you you're all you're known all over Canada, many parts of the world for your leadership. So if you can go back and think about some of the administrators that inspired you, and I know this is gonna be super hard for you because you could probably point to like basically every one of your administrators in your own school district, who's someone that you, you know, really inspired you and why? Yeah, so I, I, I'll tell you about um, uh, Gail Semanic, who was, so when I start, I'm gonna she was my principal when I started as a teacher. And, you know, when I started as a teacher, I'm 21, just turning 22 when I'm starting. So, you know, I'm, I, I went right through, start right away um, and, and probably got hired because I was a basketball coach. At least that was part of the reason I got hired. Right. Um, but what I loved was was she treated me like a teacher, 
not like the basketball coach who was teaching. I was the teacher who was going to coach basketball. Right. And that's an important difference. And like, and so she was, uh, you know, had again, high expectations, but was like super supportive. And what mm -hmm. I loved about her also was, and she was always very, if it was good for kids, it was the right thing. And that's why mm -hmm. she was super supportive of all the coaching I did because that was great for kids. Right. But also then, you know, in terms of, um, the, you know, supporting kids around courses they took or, you know, when, when there was, when kids had a challenge, she was always, she was always not, not necessarily on the kid's side, but was always wanting to make sure that we had that, like you take that, have a student perspective on things. Right. I think too often uh, administrators try to make things work for the adults, uh, not for the kids. And and she always was making it work for the kids. And, and uh, is, is Gail Semantic, is that correct? Yes. Boom. Oh, oh, she did one too. All right. Absolutely. So when you, when you, uh, when I'm listening, it's funny because I remember actually in uh, in an interview, one of the people when they hired me, it was like it was, I was hired because they couldn't get anyone else to the job. And they're like, I kind of feel you just want to coach basketball, but we were really kind of stuck. Like I remember that to say, I'm like, well, I'm not gonna pretend I don't. Like right. uh, it's funny, kind of thinking about that. But the uh, that like that pro kid stance, right? And I th I think a lot of times. And this is something I really worked with, you know, kind of in my own thinking is, you know, obviously, and I know that through your work through, you know, pandemic, COVID, all this other stuff, it's not saying like, we always choose the kids over the adults. It's like, we're, we're centered in the kids, but obviously, you know, helping the adults to help the kids is really crucial in that process. Right. And so like thinking about, you know, her putting you in a position where you're an, a great teacher is you know is ultimately helping kids and i and i think that you know it's always kind of centered on that but it's not it's not an either or right it's it's totally a both but it's at the end of the day who are we here to serve i remember in my first year that she stuck herself out there to get me a little bit better teaching load and so often teachers first year teachers get at high school get the worst courses to teach right. but she wanted me to be successful too right. like and so she she went in and manipulated some things to make sure that me and some of the other first year teachers didn't just get the leftover courses right. and those are, and so she had to do some hard things some, to make that happen. Yeah. And that actually ties in beautifully to the last question. When you think about, you know, your career and, you know, you've done amazing things. You've, you know, you just finished your dissertation. You've, you know, superintendent West Vancouver, your, your school district is known all over the world. I know that you got a lot of recognition uh, from this. And I think one of the reasons I really love asking this question is a lot of people will you know, look at what you do today, your role, and they just think you were just, you were just like born to be superintendent and you never got anything yeah. wrong or anything like that. But in reality, we all have grown in our career. So like, if you can go back to your first year teaching and you can kind of see yourself and, you know, have a conversation, like what advice would you, would you give to, to first year Chris Kennedy, you know, at, at, at teaching high school? Yeah. So I, you know, I would tell, make sure that first year Chris Kennedy was a little less black and white. I think right. coming out of education, like you, you want to have your rules. And I think especially because of a young, I'm, you know, I'm a young teacher. I'm like five yeah. years older than the kids I'm teaching. I want to make sure I have authority in the room. And, you know, I thought authority was like having, you know, having rules and sticking to the rules. Yeah. And, you know, as you go in the, through the career, you realize most things are a little more gray, right? Like mm -hmm. so many things are gray with kids. And, and you actually, you can get a lot further by cutting a kid a break once in a while. And I think first year, Chris was probably, Want, right. you know, look, had some joy in the fact when kids, you know, there was penalties for late assignments and there was, you know, there was penalties. You walked in late or you wore your hat in the classroom. You know, you know, this Chris Kennedy, 27 years later now knows, hey, you, every kid has a story when they walk in. Right. And so, mm -hmm. like, let's like you meet the kids where they are. Well, you know, it's actually funny because I, I thought about this. When we were talking about your your principal and now you kind of connected it. Because like early on in my career, I actually distinctly remember kind of this, this notion you talked about Gail Semantic, you know, being very uh, focused on kids, you know, you not being so stringent with rules. I actually remember um, being very frustrated one day because I walked into a colleague's classroom. And when I was actually in this classroom, I saw her kids eating. And the rule in the school was there is to be no food or drink <laughs> in the classrooms. And I said to her, I'm like, look, you're making us all look bad because I'm sitting here telling kids they cannot be bring food or drink into the classroom. And then you're just letting them do whatever. And you're breaking the rules and you look like the cool teacher and I look like the jerk. And then I remember her distinctly saying this to me is that these, 
some of these kids are hungry that they're not going to learn anything if they're not hungry. And, right. and I was so, I was, and I'm being honest here. I was so black and white. I'm like, look, the rule is the rule. And so you do this. And now like, and I, I've reflected on that and I like really changed a lot in my, my thinking on that talking, you know, similar to what you're saying. And my thing is that we always put people in a position to make the best decision for kids. Right. And so right. sometimes when we put in, like, I think, part of it too, you know, early, like both of us are young in our career. We don't want to get in trouble either and be For like sure. a rule breaker and stuff like that too. So I think part of that, like, Hey, there's part where, you know, we had that black and white thinking, but also there's, there's rules that are placed, put in administrators that sometimes the teacher is like, look, I got to cover myself here. And sometimes that means it's not helping out the kid. And I, the thing I always say is that if, if common sense trumps the rule, then, or the policy, then the policy is probably stupid, right? Like common sense should always kind of reign supreme through that. And you're closest to kids, you, you, you have to make those decisions. So I really appreciate that. And I, I actually know, and this is something I appreciate about you, Chris, I know that you don't just do that as a teacher, but you've done that at every level, including superintendent, which is why people I know. So I know, so appreciate you based on the day. Cause you are a superintendent, right? I'm sure you get a little slack here and there. <laughs> yeah, Thanks. for sure. So, hey, Chris, thanks for being on. And uh, West Vancouver Schools, uh, I've been out there before, and I just, I want to give you a little shout out from Chris. So uh, I hope you're having a tremendous year. Thank you, everyone, for listening. I hope you have a wonderful day. Uh, make sure you connect with Chris. Chris you'll see his, uh, his uh, Twitter stuff. Uh, he's on Twitter. All, no, he's, he's, he loves tweets, right? All the time, Chris? All the time. Tweet all away. Time. So, hey, thanks, everyone, for listening. Have a wonderful day. Look at that. They watch the dancing part, man, so you just want to drop it. <laughs>